everyone, and thank you for tuning in. Today, we will be interviewing Jen Kirkman, who will be appearing at the Just for Laughs 2017 Montreal Festival. Jen Kirkman is an American stand-up comedian, screenwriter, and actress. She is known for her regular appearances as a roundtable panelist on Chelsea Lately, as well as her appearances on the Funnier Die sketch series, Drunk History, and its 2013 continuation television series on Comedy Central. Jen has released four comedy albums, Self Help, Hail to the Freaks, I'm Going to Die Alone and I Feel Fine, and just keep living. Her debut book, I Can Barely Take Care of Myself, Tales from a Happy Life Without Kids, was published in April 2013 and became a New York Times bestseller. At the beginning of your career while living in New York City, what kind of daytime jobs did you have in order to sustain yourself? Oh, <laughs> oh my God. I had, well, I was a um, a temp at a temp agency, so like every day I would get a phone call, like, okay, now you have to go here today, or you know, I'd have jobs for a week at a time. So lots of receptionist jobs, like answering phones, um, so many jobs that were so awful. I worked for um, like a financial firm, and they didn't even have a desk for me. I had to sit at a file cabinet, so there was nowhere for my legs to go. And the guys working there, like I think they thought they were in a movie, like Wall Street or something, and they would just be screaming, and they would throw, I mean, this is in the day of, like, big, giant phones on your desk, they would throw their phones, like, out of their office, and, you know, they were just crazy, and I don't even know if this place still exists, like, I just can't imagine it was a real place, but stuff like that, I worked um, at Donna Care in the fashion house, you know, and right. they had, like, it was very Devil Wears Prada, like, I was coming to work with, like, my clunky shoes holding a bagel, and, like, the gay guy that sat next to me was like, honey, like, do not eat a bagel here. What are you doing? <laughs> I was just so out of place everywhere I went. And, like, you think of New York as, like, or I thought of New York as, like, there's Broadway and there's comedians and poets and actors. But in the business world there, they really don't recognize that there are any artists there. So if I was a weirdo. Like, any job I had, they would be like, wait, what do you want to do? Like, acting and comedy? And they're like, well, why do you want to move to L.A.? And I was like, what? And they just thought it was weird that I would be a temporary worker who didn't have an interest in getting into that particular industry I was temping at. So it was, like, very heartbreaking. It was, and so there were so many jobs where I just left on my lunch break and just kept walking and nothing like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, many, so many jobs I quit that way. It was, it was the entire time I lived here, or lived in New York. It was, it was day jobs like that, and then... Um, well, but you know what? Also, the mid-dot-com industry came around, so I had a lot of really good day jobs that paid really well, but it was just like, again, I'm working 9 to 6, and I'm not interested in what I'm doing, and then I'm doing comedy until midnight, and then getting up at 6 a.m. the next day. But luckily, I was young. I could do it. They say everything happens for a reason, and sometimes you have to think that the reason you were put into those daytime jobs gives you the material you have for today. Would you agree? I met so many characters, and it's also just like you know you really want it. You know you really want your dream if you're going to put up with all this. And if it had come to me, you know, when I wanted it to come to me, it would have been not appreciated at all. Right. What were the biggest challenges when having to manage the creative process of comedy while having a daytime job? I think just getting the motivation to, to you know, most people at the end of a work day want to blow off steam, they want to go have drinks, and, and I had to then go start my real passion, and so sometimes they didn't want to, and I would be at shows and I would feel discouraged, or I'd feel like, oh, I'm not a real comedian because I went to my day job today, so it was like, the challenges were all in my head. They were not actual challenges. You know, they were me sort of getting over this weird shame I had about working another job. Right. And it doesn't make you less of an artist. It just means you're not getting paid for your job yet, for your art yet. So it's like getting over that weird shame. It was getting motivated to, to stay awake until 9 p.m. to do a five-minute comedy set. It was believing in myself that this will change. It was, it was just internal. Right. I mean, there was obviously the challenge of, you know, New York City can be tough and it can really aggravate you if it's too crowded, too hot, too rainy, too whatever. But otherwise, I mean, the, honestly, the biggest challenges were myself. 
<laughs> and not getting bitter. You know, I was just, I was fighting bitterness even just a couple years into it. And now I'm like, oh my God, what was I bitter about? But you, it can happen. You see people starting to, to make it here and there or what you think is making it. Right. Isn't it happening for me? You know, and so the challenge is just not quitting. And you, I always wanted to quit. <laughs> And sometimes we hold ourselves back without even realizing it. During an interview promoting your first book, you mentioned dealing with anxiety for many years. What would be your advice to aspiring comedians who are also facing anxiety? Well, I had it in life, but weirdly I never had it on stage. So the stage was like where I went to feel comfortable. Uh But anxiety in my real life really was a detriment. You know, I feel like comedians think they have to be. Um, crazy and they can't get better or else they won't be funny and it's really not true because audiences can feel when you're actually not okay and it's uncomfortable like they don't mind hearing a story about one time when you were acting crazy because they can tell now that you're fine but if you're still kind of anxious and awkward they can feel it and it's not fun and I I had to think of like had to you know comedians could be very laser focused and only think about their their comedy life and I had to think about my whole life and just think I need to get my anxiety under control so I can live a good life and that will only make my comedy better so like I used to be too afraid to get on an airplane so how could I have ever been you know I never could have achieved my um what I'm doing now which is touring around the world so I had to deal with that and get over my fear of flying I had to get over my fear of like moving places by myself because that's a big part of comedy is like you have to be able to live in cities that you know, you might have to move to LA at a moment's notice, but you have to be a little more flexible. And anxiety is not, doesn't make people very flexible. So yeah, I had to really like think about it and think about my life is, so my advice to anyone is like, get your life together because it will affect your comedy. And, and this whole notion that you have to be crazy to be funny is just not true. Like fix yourself. <laughs> <Don't get it. laughs> you currently have two comedy specials on Netflix where we can clearly get a sense of who you are as a comic. Should Montreal expect some similarities with Irrational Thoughts, or will it be completely different? Um, yeah, so Irrational Thoughts is, is, I didn't come to Montreal last year. I skipped a year, so there's a few, um, there's a little tour I did in America that Montreal didn't see, um, and I realized I have, <clears throat> I have some different material. Um, some of it's new that no one's seen yet. Uh, one bit is from the special Just Keep Living, and a few bits are things that Montreal people haven't seen yet. So I kind of put all these bits together and called it Irrational Thoughts because it's about all these times when I had irrational thoughts for the New York years or just crazy things I thought and that I think are funny. So, yeah, I think it's sort of, it'll all, it'll be very in my style, and they might literally see one bit that they've seen from the recent Netflix special, and then the rest of it will be all new to them. After 20 years in the comedy business, looking back, is there anything you wish you had done differently? And if yes, can you please share? Oh, yeah. I have so many things. I mean, I try to be very zen about it and think, like you said, everything happens for a reason, so I shouldn't have any regrets. It all happened how it was supposed to. But I do wish that I hadn't listened to advice from people who don't know what they're talking about. Uh And... I think it's a dangerous thing to say to someone in their 20s. Like, I I might not recommend to a 25-year-old today to not listen to people, but the type of 25-year-old I was is I wasn't very secure in myself, and so whenever anyone suggested I should do comedy a different way, I would I would believe them and go, oh, okay, sure, and I would go against myself. Um, right. And so I think if you're that type of person, you should stick with your instincts. I, I was listening to people that really... You know, I thought adults knew everything, and I these people that I look back and their jobs weren't that important. You know, they booked a comedy show like Big Deal, or they worked at a comedy network, but they weren't like some big cheese, you know. And I listened to them, and they said, you know, you should be more of a one-liner joke comedian. That's very popular right now. I thought, oh, okay, and I tried to do that, and I was really bad at it. I had a reputation for a while not being that funny, and I wasn't being true to myself, and and um, I was too afraid to try things, and I thought, well, you know, I'm probably not that good at writing, so I'm not going to write a script. I just like, didn't believe in myself, and, and it was like, I'm going to a very entrepreneurial job, and you have to just, it's 
declare that you're going to try something and no one should stop you because everyone might be wrong. You just never know who's going to end up being funny because we're not, none of us are funny at first. So it's really weird. There's like no evidence that you're going to be good later. You just have to believe in yourself until it's really obvious that nobody thinks you're funny. <laughs> <laughs> totally get it. So when I was doing research for this interview, I came across a website and business that you had started with Becky Donahue back in 2001 called Girl Comic. Jen, you were totally ahead of your time. With everything that you've just said regarding believing in yourself, Girl Comic was a platform where you encourage aspiring female comedians to tell their stories and you help them to interact with established comedians. Now that the internet has blown up to be what it is, have you thought of relaunching it? I haven't thought about it again because um, so much work, but also because it, it seems now like it would be throwing a, a, a pebble into the ocean. It's just there's so much out there like that. But I would say I haven't thought about it, but I'm very proud of what we did. But maybe someone younger who's up and coming can take the reins. Right. So if there were someone out there who wanted to restart it, would you be willing to come in and speak to the aspiring comedians that are looking for your advice? Yes, absolutely. As long as they didn't want me to do any back-end internet coding or <laughs> all the stuff that I was doing back then, absolutely. Oh my gosh, were you really? Yeah, we did everything. Oh man. I don't even remember how I knew that, but... I want to thank you so much for your time today, and... Thank you, I'm so glad this worked out. My fellow Virgo, yes. I'm so proud of you and everything that you do, and just stay amazing. Well, thank you, and tell Sarah, is that her name? Sarah, tell her to say hi at the show, for sure. For sure. Have an amazing day. Thanks, bye. Thanks, Jen. Bye-bye.